Hey there folks, in today's video I'm going to show you what type of corner bead to use when you're drywalling up to a fiberglass shower surround. So you have your edge here, you're going to leave quarter inch roughly or a little bit more is okay of a gap between your drywall and your fiberglass surround. This is the top edge and it'll be the same for your side edges as well. So the bead that we're going to be using looks like this. It's kind of shaped like a T. So this small edge right here is actually a tearaway edge and this wider edge is actually what goes inside right here between the surround and the drywall and then the spotted edge here goes against our actual drywall. So again take your, your thicker side here, put it in. like that. So you want this resting right against your fiberglass surround here. Now we've measured this ahead of time and we use tin snips to cut it, it's the easiest way. And just make sure it fits. Once you've confirmed that it fits, we're just gonna remove it for a quick second. And we're gonna use some kind of a guard. I'm just using this old cardboard from the packaging of the tub surround or the shower surround because we're going to be using spray adhesive and we don't want anything getting on the brand new surround so once that's covered up this is the adhesive that we're going to be using it's actually made by the same company that makes the trim trim techs 847c buy that at your hardware store put your safety glasses on when you're using it and if you do get it on any of your finished tile or tub surround or anything like that, just use some paint thinner and it'll come right off and do it quickly. And since we're in a small bathroom, we're gonna use our fan just to make sure there's ventilation. So we're gonna shake it up real well. We're gonna put our piece up here too. So again, remember your half inch side here, your wider side goes into the wall. And we're gonna spray both the wall and the edge of the trim here. So as you can see, I did two passes on each and then we're gonna leave it for, till it tacks up, about 30 seconds to a minute. And this stuff is very strong, so make sure that you have your fan on or a window open if you have one. All right, so now that's fairly tacky. And this is why you want to confirm that it fits beforehand, because once it goes on, it sticks really well. Just run your fingers along the edge of the drywall there. All right, so we're gonna let that dry. I like to leave it dry overnight. I've done it when it's still wet. It can be a little bit difficult. So I'll show you how the tearaway side works and everything when we get to that. So for now, every few minutes while it's drying, just make sure you come back just run your finger back over it just to make sure it's made contact and still has contact all right so we'll see you in a bit when it dries all right folks so now that this adhesive is all dry and we're ready to apply our joint compound i just want to show you a few things quick before we go ahead and do that i have this little piece here now this is your tearaway side the one that's facing you right now after you've installed it if you look very closely there's actually a raised edge right here. And what we're gonna be doing when we have our knife going along it is our knife is gonna be on top of that raised edge and going all the way down the length of it. So that raised edge is just in the very corner here and you'll ride all the way along the top. And the second thing I wanna show you, when you're going to be doing the mudding and you're smoothing it out 
This side here, you want to apply light pressure to, and the side on the drywall right here, you want to put heavy pressure on, so then that way it smooths out nicely. And the third and last thing I want to show you real quick is the holes in here. Even when I did the first one over on the other side of the tub here, I thought it looked perfect and it was going to be a one coat, but then when it dried up, the compound actually sunk into the holes, so you may need a second coat, which is no big deal. So we're going to go ahead and start putting some mud on. All right, so now that that's done, it's a little hard to to get it on there without globbing it on. So just if you do like I did, just make sure you clean it up real nice. So we'll probably be doing one more coat. We'll just do that one off camera. You just do the same process again. And then, so I'll do that one off camera. And then when we're all set to sand, I'll show you that. And then I'll show you the caulking. All right, so we'll see you when it's all dry. All right, folks, so now that everything's all dry, we've done our extra coat. We're gonna tear away this little trim piece, the one that I showed you there before. So we're gonna zoom you in. If you need a pair of needle nose pliers, it might help, especially if you're in a corner here, it's kind of hard to grab that. So feel free to grab yourself some. All right, so we're having a little bit of, tr bit of trouble getting into the corner there. So I'm just gonna show you on this one, it's a little easier for the camera. So we're just gonna grab our bead, pull on it like that, get it started, and just pull it all the way down the length. All right, so we do that all the way down there and then we're just gonna do it all the, right, the way around the top where we put the bead and then we'll do the caulking and we'll be right back to show you that caulking. All right, so now that we have all the beads torn off all the way around, we're gonna take our sander and just touch up the edges here. Now you can either use your sanding pad that I showed you. If you're gonna use a sander, I prefer this oscillating one compared to a random orbit sander because the orbit sander spins and it might damage this. This one you have a little more control with. So we're just gonna go ahead and get started. <clears throat> All right, so we're just gonna clean all this up, dust it off, take a damp rag, make sure all the dust is off, and then we'll get to the caulking. All right, folks, now that we've toweled everything nice and clean with the damp cloth after we sanded it, everything's all good, our beads are all nice and flush. We're gonna run a bead of caulking all the way along the drywall on the gap that meets the surround. I just got this caulking right here by DAP. Make sure it's a bath one so it's waterproof. So we're just gonna start running our bead.
All right, so that's all there really is to that one, folks. You do the same thing all the way around all your edges. So we're just gonna continue. I don't need to do it off camera because you get the point. We're gonna go all the way along the top, down this side. And then we're just gonna go down the outside right here and then we'll be good to go to paint. Now, just in case you're wondering why we did the caulking before the paint, usually you do it after. I prefer doing it before because then you're gonna have a little more forgiveness. If you look close, it's kind of a thick bead there which if you have colored paint, it'll show up like on this color here, for example. Whereas if I do it first, I can tape my line so the caulking will barely show up. It'll be kind of hidden. So hopefully you found this helpful, everyone. And as always, please like and subscribe.